Hey guys, I want to share a little bit more with you. I was looking up the the verse on the two witnesses, Revelation 11.3 on Bible Hub, just to see what these commentaries say. And I see a lot of them rejecting this idea of the two witnesses being two specific individuals. And especially um, saying that they are Moses and Elijah. Even from people who are futurists, I believe that, that quite a few of these people on here are futurists. Um, so even though they might not be pre-trib, you know, they might be post-trib or something like that, but that still is a futurist uh, interpretation. Okay, the pre-trib, the mid-trib, post-trib, you know, all that, whatever is it's all futurist um and all of that is false but anyways a lot of these reject that the two witnesses are two specific individuals um i could go through there oh i don't know let's see Anyways, I didn't think to <laughs> remember really. I was reading through here, and I know I saw some of these were rejecting that idea, um, especially the one over here. I'll go to that in a minute, but let's see. I don't know. Say, so here's unto my two witnesses. The word two evidently denotes that the number would be small, but yet it is not necessarily necessary to confine it literally to two persons or, or to two societies or communities. Uh, though I do believe it represents the church, you know, as a whole and maybe as individuals, but but this person at least says it's there's no use to confine it to two people literally. Barnes, I think. Barnes and Oates. Um. And I don't know. There's... Hmm. Anyways, sorry, um, but I think this is interesting over here, this pulpit commentary, because it gives like a rundown that it's not Moses and Elijah and stuff, and it gives like points here. Um, it's, it's not probable that two individuals are meant, because as we have shown throughout the apocalypse, the application is invariably to principles and societies, though this may include particular applications in certain cases. Also, it's inconceivable that Moses and Elias or any other of the saints of God should return from paradise and to suffer as these two witnesses. That's true. Our Lord expressly explained the reference to the coming of Elias and declared that he had already come. That's also true. I think that's significant. And there seems no more reason for interpreting these two witnesses literally of two men than interpreting Sodom and Egypt in their ordinary geographical Signification in verse 8. The details of the details of the fate of the two witnesses agree with the interpretation given, the whole vision being understood as symbolical. So, um, I'm going to take some of those arguments and put them on the website, and I want to share this in this video too. I've mentioned it before, but I'm adding to it. So under Doctrines of Devils, i got Futurism, and I've got all these categories, and I probably might add more, but just some of the important points that I can think of. The Rapture, the Millennial Kingdom, the Resurrection of the Flesh, okay, saying that um, 
before the Millennial Kingdom bodies will be raised physically, the seven-year tribulation, the Antichrist, the mark of the beast, the second coming of Christ, and I'm not denying the second coming of Christ, I'm denying and refuting the false interpretation of the second coming of Christ. You know, futurists believe that Christ will come physically and reign on this earth, and I'm saying that the Bible teaches that when we die, we go to meet Christ, we go to be where he is, that's when he appears, that's the second coming of Christ. The judgment seat of Christ, I'm not denying that um, everybody's judged, but I am... But the futurist interpretation that is this uh, rapture happens where living saints are raptured up to heaven. They don't face physical death. And then they are judged for their deeds. Uh, it's a special judgment only for the saints. That's false. Okay, so that's what I'm refuting. The 144,000, we're going to talk about that. Uh, that's a symbolic number, basically. Um, the two witnesses, okay, and a lot more. And so, if we're in a debate with a futurist person, I'm talking about, like, I had a debate last night in the comments on the Mark of the Beast with somebody. And so, we're going back and forth. I'm saying the Mark of the Beast is symbolic, you know, because the seal of God that is in the saints' foreheads is symbolic. You know, usually people aren't, we're not talking about, we're not wondering, you know, where's this, where's, when's the seal of God going to come, and, um, so, anyway, if you focus on any one of these points, usually, like, somebody believes in all of these, okay, it's all tied in together, so you can see there's a whole lot of error there, okay, uh, and even more, that's not on here, but these are some of the big points, so, you know, if we're talking about the rapture, we're basically talking about all this stuff is included with it, okay? And how I come to find out that the rapture is false, you know, there's many reasons, but one of the reasons is I found out, you know, the judgment seat of Christ isn't what it has been taught to be. And things start crumbling down, so, you know, I'm going to go after these specific things and refute objections and... So I'm also doing expository studies, you know, in the book of Revelation. I'm going to go through and try to explain what they mean, but at the same time I have this section where it's going to be more focused on answering objections and stuff to, to people believing this, and I hope that more and more people will see how symbolic Revelation is and try to understand it correctly as it's meant to be understood. Okay, uh, no... Like I said, a brother wants me to hit really hard on this, and uh, I do too. I think it's right, and I think this is going to help me to, to move further along with that. So this is something that needs to be done. Uh, all this stuff. There's error in all this stuff. And it's all tied in together. Okay. If somebody's talking about the coming of the Antichrist, or somebody's talking about the seven-year tribulation, somebody's talking about bodies being physically raised in the future, somebody's talking about a physical millennial kingdom on the earth, uh, you know, then then they pretty much believe all this stuff, and it's all false. So, <laughs> anyways, that's that. I'm adding that section from the pulpit commentary to the two witnesses, and I'm going to go through and refine it a little better. But uh, it gives some arguments here. I mean, Jesus did say that, you know, the, the second coming of Elias was in John the Baptist. Um, and there is no reason to believe that Moses and, and Elijah should come back to suffer as the two witnesses. Uh, just because there's mentioned miracles that are similar to them and that's used as an example and in this case it's symbolic it's representative you know that's that's how we have to understand it so and i'll give more reasons and arguments why hopefully to be more convincing but uh, i'm convinced of this and the more that i look into it the more and more convinced that i get so uh God bless.